Hey guys and welcome back to a new Jetpack Compose tutorial. In this tutorial I will show you how we can build very custom layouts in Jetpack Compose. If you don't know what a layout is, that is pretty much just a container for children. And in terms of Compose, these children are composables. So typical layouts that are already contained in Compose are for example a row, a column, a box and similar things. And in the end a layout just determines how the children, how the child composables we put in it are positioned and shown on the screen. And as you can see, a little sample what we will build here is called a flow row. That is a layout that is typically only available by, via library, um, but we're going to implement a very simplified custom version of this. So each of these um, boxes here would be one composable, which we put in this flow row layout we will build here. And the characteristic of that layout is that all items are actually arranged in a row, so just like a normal row layout. But as soon as the next item inside of a row would overlap, so it would be too wide to fit into a single row, then it will simply um, jump to the next row and occupy the space there. So this is what we're going to implement, not because this specific layout is super helpful in practice, but because this teaches you how you can build very custom layouts in case you have the scenario where you have very custom requirements, how composables should be aligned on the screen based on some certain rules, and you want to implement these requirements. So let's jump into an empty Jetpack Compose project. And in here, we will start right away creating this flow row composable. And in here, we will just take in a modifier like any other layout as well. Um, all row, column, boxes and so we'll all take a modifier to change their appearance. And then also what every single layout will need is a content composable lambda. So this is the lambda that just um, determines what kind of child elements, child composables we want to put in this layout. And to now create this custom layout, we simply use the layout composable. And you can see this needs a measure policy. This needs multiple things. On the one hand, the content, which we can already assign. It needs a modifier, which we can assign. And as I said, this measure policy. Let's also assign that and that is actually kind of the core of a custom layout. This is also nothing else than simply a lambda function which gives us a measure scope. And the purpose of this lambda is to just take into account all the child views or the child composables we have in this custom layout. So we pass to this content lambda and then measure them and finally to determine where they should be placed on the screen in terms of coordinates. And this lambda will on the one hand take measurables and constraints. And these measurables are in the end just a list of measurables. So one measurable is just an element we can use to measure on the screen. So our child in the end, our child composable. Since each composable can be measured in terms of we want to know how wide that is or what the width of the element is. We want to know what the height of that is. And we will then take these values into account to calculate where we want to position this on the screen. And the constraints just contain information about the whole layout's bounds. And the first thing we want to usually do inside of this measure policy is we want to create a list of so-called placeables. A placeable is nothing else than a measurable that has already been measured and can now be placed on the screen. So can now be put somewhere inside of the layout at specific coordinates. And we can easily get this by saying measurables.map and we map all these measurables to it.measure. And you can see this returns a placeable. We need to pass in our constraints. And then we have a list of placeables. And let's really keep that simple first of all and just build a very normal row. So without this flow behavior that um, composables will jump to the next row when uh, this overlaps. And since that's so easy, we can already jump to the last step of implementing a layout, a custom one, and that is calling the layout function. You can see this returns a measure result, which is exactly what this measure policy expects at the end. So if we use that, you can see the error will go away. We need to pass the width of our layout, the height of our layout, and we get this placement block in which we can then use our placeables and place them at specific positions on the screen or in the layout rather. So the width is simply our constraints max width, so whatever, uh, however large this composable is. And the height is constraints max height. And then we get this placeable scope here, in which we can now loop over our placeables list, get reference to each placeable, and then we could call placeable.place. This is only available here inside of this placement scope. And here we now say, hey, for this specific placeable, we want to put that on the screen at this coordinate. 
since we are just implementing a normal row here at first, we just want to um, keep the y coordinate constant because we don't position our um, composables on the y axis in that case. So we can leave y at zero, but the x value will change because as soon as we put one composable in this row, the next one should actually consider the um, taken width of that first composable. So if we take a look at my simple example here, let's just take a look at this very first row. And this green box here would be our first composable. So the first coordinate we want to put this is 0, 0. So we start counting from the top left corner. Y would increase if we go down and X will increase if we go to the right. So the first composable should be placed at 0, 0. But then we need to increase the, the X position where we want to place the next one exactly by the width of the first composable. So here the next composable should be placed, which will be this little, yeah, kind of violet purple box. And that is what we'll do here. So we need to keep track of an X position, which initially is zero, and we pass this here. And then after every single iteration in this loop, we simply increase this X position by exactly the width of the placeable we placed. And if we now try this out by going to our root view here, our main activity, and we now use our flow row, which currently is nothing else than a normal row. And in here we have something like repeat, maybe three times, and we just generate boxes with random dimensions to see that this is working. So we have a box, we assign a modifier of let's say modifier width, where the width is something like random.nextInt, we can say from 50 to 200 dp, and then refer to dp. We can give each item a constant height of 100 dp, and then we can say we give each item a random background color. So something like a new compose color, import that from compose UI graphics. And then we say we generate a random long value, next long. And the until value will simply be the maximum color we can generate, which is um, just eight times an F like this. And if we now try this out, take a look here in my app. Then you can see this is working perfectly fine. Um, the colors are very bright here, but um, there's actually a third box. So we see the first box is positioned correctly in our row. The purple box is positioned correctly and this one as well. But if we would have like 20 boxes here, then these would simply leave the screen here and not jump to the next row. And that is what we want to achieve with such a flow row layout. So let's manipulate and change that a little bit to get the desired behavior. So in the end, my plan to implement this is to just have a list of a list of placeables. So every single row will be a list of placeable. And since we can have many rows, we will have a list of these placeable rows. And that is why we will have a grouped placeables list, which is a mutable list of a list of placeable. Then we will have something like current group, which is the current index, which or well, the, not the index, but the, the current list in here that we're currently drawing on the screen, which is a mutable list of placeable. And we need to keep track of the current group width. Since if that exceeds the screen's um, width, then we want to increase, uh, then we want to update the current group to the next one. So we will then draw the next items on the next group. So after that, we can loop over our placeables for each, get a reference to each placeable. And then in here, we can have a simple check if the current group width plus the width of the placeable is less than or equal to our constraints width, constraints.max width, which is the width of our whole layout, then, so if the, the total width of our current group and the new placeable still fits into our whole width, then we just want to add the new placeable to our current group. So then we say current group that add placeable. And we also want to say current group width plus equals placeable dot width. So for the next call of this, for the next iteration, this current group width will simply be increased by exactly um, the width of the previous placeable. And else, however, so if our placeable does not fit into this row anymore, then we want it to jump to the next row. So in that case, we say, we take our group placeable, so our list of lists, and here we add the current group because that current group does not contain enough space anymore to fit into to fit in the, the current placeable. 
And then after that, we need to update our current group with a new group since we now started a new row in our layout. And that is simply a new mutable list of and we put in the new placeable. So we now start a completely new group with just the single placeable and then we will start all over again in the next iteration by ch yeah, checking if the next placeable fits into that new group. And we also need to update our current group width with the width of our single placeable. And after that, after all of our placeables have been kind of split up into this um, type of list here, we still need to check if there are some placeables in the last group. So if the current group is not empty, then we want to add that current group to our group's placeables. So that add, and we add the current group. So now that logic was just used to split up our list of placeables into this type of structure, because that makes it now very easy to draw these on the screen. So let's scroll down to our layout block. And this time, actually not only the X position differs, but also the Y position, because the Y position will be increased as soon as the placeable jumps to the next row. So we'll need to keep track of the Y position here which is zero. And then we can say we loop over our group, uh, group's placeables that for each, we'll get a reference to each row and one row here is really just a list of placeables. And now for every single row, we just do what we did before. So we just um, take all this code, put it inside here, just that this time we also need to pass in the Y position since that needs to be considered as well. We still want to increase the X position by the placeable width, but since we now use two lists, it will automatically jump to the next list as soon as this one is empty. And since we did the calculations before, this will always perfectly, like not perfectly fit into a row, but all these placeables inside of a single row will fit in there. One thing that's missing is that we need to update the Y position, which we do after we um, completely iterated over a list of placeables. So right here, since after we iterated over one row, we then want to update y so that the next row jumps to jumps yeah a little bit below the first one. And here we say y position plus equals row dot max of or null it dot height, or we say it's zero. What the heck happens here? Well, we just take a look at which composable of the previous row has the largest height, because that is the value we need to um, add to the y position. So we just add the maximum height from the previous row to the y position, and then we will be good. If we now scroll up, increase this repeat here to let's say 50, and relaunch the app, we should hopefully see that our app is looking similar as before. No, this is crashing. Why is it crashing? Let's take a look, probably because it's exceeding our bounds. That could be because 50 is quite large. And now it says place was called in a node which was placed already, which is a bit strange. So of course you can't place a placeable that has been placed already, but I'm curious why this happens in our case here. Okay, and the issue seems to be that I accidentally called the placeables here and looped over that, but we of course need to loop over each row. Otherwise we don't even consider that. If we now relaunch this, we should hopefully see something that's working. There we go. Yes, of course, it's not scrollable because we didn't assign a scrollable modifier, but it is working perfectly fine and our policy seems to be working. So as a little homework, you could maybe practice that by also building a flow column, which works the same, but just for column so that um, items would stack vertically and then jump to the next column. And you could also implement that you actually have some kind of arrangement and alignment here. So you could also determine how a specific row should align their views. So for example, for a space between that it should um, put these both composables at the edges to the edges of the screen and align the middle one in the center and also support the other types of arrangements. I hope you like this and I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye bye.